Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Steven Bucher. I am a product manager on the PowerShell team and I'm here to talk about some shell enhancements. Um, oh, you know, some of the things that we've implemented on the PowerShell team that can really help you enhance your interactive console experience in the shell of PowerShell. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> so I kind of wanted to first start talking, uh, talking at a high level about enhancements and expectations and assistance to kind of give people a better idea of how we're approaching um, enhancing your shell experience. Um, now, of course, first and foremost, AI is top of mind right now. ChatGPT, OpenAI, they're all the rage, they're all the hype, um, and have proven that artificial intelligence uh, can be an extremely powerful tool. I mean, even just as it is today, I've used it here and there for, for debugging PowerShell issues or asking it to write me some PowerShell scripts, and, and that's great. Um, but you know, it's still got a lot to, to learn and get better at. And, and I think you know, my stance on AI is I think it's gonna be a vital tool for development. Um, I think it's going to be kind of, you know, people are starting to slowly integrate it into their daily work. I hear a, a number of folks, does anyone use it today? Any kind of sort of AI tools in their daily work? Just raise a hand. You know, here and there, you know, if you need a problem, I'd love to talk to you about it more. It's, it's, it's an interesting new um, experience uh, that, that you know, has never never been 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 out there before, um, and so I, I kind of believe you know whether it's going to be in your shell or not, people are going to want to use it. And so, um, however, I, I think there's a different kind of side to AI that I think not too many people are talking about is the expectation for assistance that it's going to drive. And so we we have AI in every part of our technology world today. I mean, think about typing in a URL. You'll get the the last history time. If you even type in the name of the repo in GitHub, it will take you to that GitHub repo if you're a frequent uh, per, uh, viewer of some of the GitHub repos. Um, or even, you know, lots of mail clients nowadays have very simple AI tools to help you auto-complete very um, uh, common phrases such as, you know, thanks very much or best, sincerely, you know, that kind of thing. Um, they're slowly starting to get integrated into our world without necessarily us recognizing it or, or, or getting, um, uh, taught it, it just kind of is slowly becoming there. And, and uh, but when that's taken away, it can be very, very disruptive. I mean, just a while ago, I was trying to email someone and I, I had to alphabetically go down all the email people in my clients instead of someone named Michael who I email quite often. You know, I kind of want that kind of assistance in my life. And so I think at the AI, uh, the advent of AI today is going to start accelerating this kind of expectation everywhere in technology. And I'm not saying necessarily that AI is needed in all of these tools. It can just be a different level of assistance that helps you uh, quickly and more uh, enhance uh, your experience to be more efficient where you are. Um, and so, you know, kind of, you know, talking about that, it, it's, we're, we're committed to increasing uh, assistance uh, in the shell, whether it be AI powered or not. We think there is a kind of a, a spectrum of assistance that there can be where, you know, on one side it's super chat GPT and knows everything you're thinking, it just knows everything. But on the other side, it's like simple tab completion. Like this is the, the spectrum of assistance I'm thinking about. And I think there's a lot of room in the middle that we can work on to help uh, enhance your interactive experience. Um, so that's kind of where, where I'm thinking and, and how we're trying to design tools around PowerShell the shell to, to help enhance your interactive console experience. Um, and so uh, ultimately, we're also trying to design them in a non-disruptive and a very helpful way so that it's not like just completely breaking your workflow. It, it's similar to what I was saying earlier with like the URL stuff, the kind of assistance that's there, but you don't really notice it's there until you notice it's gone. And so that's kind of the, the, the natural uh, assistance that I'm trying to design these tools around such that they can uh, enhance your experience without you even really noticing. Um, so first, I want to talk about PowerShell Predictive IntelliSense as one of the enhancements that we're doing. And we hinted at this in today's State of the Shell demo, but I wanted to dive a little deeper into it as well as show off a number of improvements uh, that we've made in the past year to them. 
Um, so if you aren't familiar, PowerShell Predictive IntelliSense is a uh, way to enhance your shell experience that tries to predict what you're next going to type. And so uh, it was built in order to accelerate and enhance your interactive experience. It's available in PS Readline, two point, the latest version of PS Readline 2.26, um, which is a module shipped with PowerShell, uh, and it provides a number of other enhancements that I'll be talking about a little later in this presentation. We have uh, two main types of predictors. We have history predictor, and then we have plugin predictors. So history is for acceleration. Um, it uses your history uh, in your uh, session to, to uh, best suggest what next might come uh, as you're typing. Plugins is an extensible model, but it's more for enhancement where it can predict something that you've never ever typed before. Um, so we'll talk about both of those in a second here. So history predictors, like I said, it kind of fills uh, from your history that matches the characters being typed. Um, it is supported uh, everywhere PowerShell is supported. So this includes Windows PowerShell um, and PowerShell 7. Uh, both include history and it is now turned on by default in both of these experiences. So you may have noticed it yourself, um, but if not, if you see kind of the, the grayed out version, that's history predictors being on by default in, in the latest experience. And it is persistent across sessions. Um, the, there's also a get history command that only shows your current session uh, history, but this one is persistent across your different sessions, so you don't have to worry about closing your PowerShell window um, and that sort of thing. And so you'll notice this a lot in today's demo and you saw it in State of the Shell. It's honestly fantastic for demos so you don't fat finger any sort of uh, commands. And so plugin predictors is when it gets really, really cool. It is extensibility for predictors. So plugin predictors are PowerShell modules that subscribe to the uh, command predictor interface in PowerShell that uh, allows them to, to give suggestions as you're typing. And so, however, this is you know, only available in PowerShell 7.2 plus, and again, in the latest version of PS Readline. Um, it is also defaulted in uh, PS Readline 2.26, but um, there's no modules imported yet. So you have to import the modules, you have to download the modules that have these kind of capabilities off of the gallery, and then import them, and then keep them imported, say, in your profile, so that they're persistently there. Um, okay. All right, let's, let's, let's go over to a demo. Enough, enough talk about this. Give me one second just to switch over. Okay, can you see my screen? Fantastic. Okay, and let me know, just call out if it is a little too small. I will try to, yep, I was. Um, is that a little better? Okay, so, um, so first off, you know, how, do you, how do you enable these stuff? So like I said, it's enabled by default, so you typically won't have to use these commands, but if you uh, want to enable them or disable them, you can uh, set PS readline option predictor source to history. Um, we have three options here where you can do history, history and plugin or none, or actually just plugin as well. Um, so these are kind of the different permutations you can do with that. Um, for this demo, I'm going to have both of them enabled. I'll just stop there and start it again. Um, and you can see here, it also still works in the uh, VS Code uh, terminal um, as well. There's a number of, actually, you know what, for this, I'll switch over here, just because I think it will be a little bit better to see. Um, but uh, another thing we showed off in today's State of the Shell is the, the list view. So currently, as I'm typing, this is what we call inline view. So it's a grayed out version, just the single line completion, but you might, this might not be exactly what you want. And so if you want to uh, see a variety of different options, you can press F2 and you can now see the different options uh, available to you from different predictors. And you can see uh, there's 10 right now defaulted and the first three will be from history predictors and then the remaining will be from any plugins you have. However, if you only have history enabled, um, you'll show 10 history suggestions that way. Um, and in the right, you'll see the source of where they're coming from, history, and then I have AZ predictor, which I'll talk about shortly here, um, as, a, as a pretty cool plugin predictor. Um, you can also do a lot of customizability to, to these predictors, and so we can change uh, some of the colorings for it to change the inline to be uh, a different kind of color that may be more visible. So if I do something like this, you can see, well, I gotta go back to inline view. Oh wait, this is not green. 
my comments are wrong. Um, we'll do magenta, that's a little bit more striking. Oh, did I miss, yep, fat fingered it. Um, so now you can see it's, it's, uh, it's magenta, the, the, the list view. You can also do uh, a number of other one, other um, customizability, so set, I'm gonna use this, I think I have it set, PS reline option. Oh, maybe I have it on my other machine, hang on. Oops. Here we go. So we can also show some uh, different colors, um, for, such as the list prediction. And so this changes uh, stuff to be, instead of the default dark yellow, it change your, your uh, predictor source to be green. Um, so that's just something else I wanted to show off. Um, now, of course, so uh, plugin predictors. So like I said, plugin predictors are PowerShell modules you can import. And so it's pretty simple to uh, install them. So what I'm gonna show off uh, primarily is the AZ dot tools dot predictor. So you can install this just by doing install module az dot tools dot predictor and then import it like that. Um, and then all you'll have to do to enable it is to enable az predictor. Um, and if you do all sessions, it will save it to your profile. Um, oh, maybe I don't. And so uh, the main thing that AZ predictor provides is a uh, more intelligent um, way to suggest uh, AZ specific commandlets. And so anything in the AZ.star suite of modules, it will uh, try to predict more longer views, uh, longer suggestions of AZ commandlets. And so you'll see uh, here that I can look, if I do set dash AZ, I just type set just A, then Z. Um, it will try to fill out not just the commandlet, but the parameters and the parameter values to help uh, you with discoverability of the m v wide variety of AZ commandlets out there. There's over 4,000 AZ commandlets out there, and it can be very hard to remember exactly how to use them, um, what parameters are required, or you know, just typical um, uh, use cases for these for these commandlets, and so uh, this is using a machine learning model. This came out uh, a little over a year ago, and is sometimes is contextually aware as well. So sometimes, as you type your resource uh, name, it will autofill that resource name into the future. It's all locally done on Box, and uh, helps you enhance your discoverability. One also really cool thing about this is this is now default in uh, Cloud Shell. So if you are in Cloud Shell, this is one of the tools shipped with Cloud Shell, so you will have AZ Predictor enabled by default in Cloud Shell. So as you are in the portal, working with your, your, your resources uh, in Cloud Shell, you can use AZ Predictor to help enhance your experience there. Um, so that's a pretty cool announcement since uh, this. So. <laughs> Jason's very happy about that, so we, uh, we're, we're pretty excited about that. <laughs> Um, another cool thing I want to highlight is the completion predictor. This is a plugin predictor that um, uh, the PowerShell team has built. Uh, it was built by our, our, our one, and all of this stuff has been built by uh, our engineer, Dongbo Wang, who is actually here. Why don't you just put your hand up? Um, he's here for my moral support and also to help answer questions towards the end. So uh, we would love to talk to you guys uh, about any suggestions you might have. So the completion predictor uh, uses tab completion to help enhance your prediction experience. So um, I should have it imported already, but just in case I don't. So say, you know, I have, here you go. So um, here's an example. So as I'm starting to type the, the parameter in, you know, get child, I'm just any arbitrary commandlet, um, it will populate uh, the, the possible parameters from uh, this command line. So this is great, um, especially if you kind of want a, a hint for tab completion, it will help kind of get you, get you that uh, way and, and explore it in the same predictor uh, experience. However, um, you know, uh, yeah, I think that's it on that. Um, okay. 
me just go back to my slides. Covered some of this. Oh, I will do a shout out. I, want, I do want to do a shout out to some of the awesome community predictors uh, that have uh, been published. There's a great PNP PowerShell predictor out there. There's another one called PowerType, a directory predictor that is uh, aware of your directory and uh, the folders in your directory structure. It's, it's pretty awesome. Um, and there's many, many more. If you just search in the PowerShell gallery predictor, you'll find um, uh, a good number of different predictors themselves. And so um, let, let, let's talk about some improvements. So uh, we recently released a PS Readline 2.3 beta 0. And um, it has a number of awesome improvements that I'll hop into a demo here for, because I think it'll be just more fun to, to do it that way. So um, oh, here we go. Oh, come on. Is it working? There we go. OK. Um, let me just change this back real quick. OK, so right now I have the latest version. I have PS Readline uh, 2.3 beta 0 installed. And the first thing that you might have noticed is um, when I was showing the completion predictor, you noticed that the AZ predictor just went away. It was just poof, it was gone. There was no um, AZ predictor there. And you know, we, we kind of noticed that this was a problem if you started to have multiple predictors in your screen. It, it, you wouldn't see that many. And so we implemented a scrollable list view now. So, um, so let's do this. I'll do the same, get child item. Oh wait, let me make sure I have this enabled. Set. Frame plugin, new AZVM. Let's see, will this work? Oh, sometimes AZ predictor doesn't like to cooperate with me. Uh, get. AZVM, and then if I do this, oh, you know what I didn't do? Silly me, I forgot to import the completion predictor. I have to be on another session since I, I can't have kind of easily switched between the two versions of PS Readline. So if I do new get AZVM, oh. There we go. Sometimes the timeout, it, it gets a little fuzzy with the tab completion. So um, say I'm using an AZ commandlet, and I don't know what the parameters are, and I want to use the completion predictor, and I also want to use the AZ predictor, and I also want to use the history predictor. Well, now uh, we've enabled you so that you can have a scrollable list view. So um, as you see here, as I start scrolling down, I am selecting different options, and, uh, and then seemingly I'm at the end. However, I can keep going. It's pretty cool, right? So, <laughs> and once I'm at the end, it will wrap around back to the top. So it's 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 you know just just like a typical kind of scrolling view. And you'll notice something special too about this UI is we've added this thing we call a metadata line at the very top here. And so this helps you navigate and make sure you know where you are with the scrollable list view. And so it gives you you know where the the index of where you're at currently, the number total number of predictors available, so that you can know yeah that oh I'm at the end or no I'm not. We also have um, the sources and the number of suggestions from particular predictors. Um, so you can see history just has one here. AZ predictor has five, and I'm indexing through the five. Then I get to the completion, and then it will show it that way. And so that's pretty awesome. So now it, it kind of helps you get more predictors um, into your experience. And, and one thing I should note, too, is the ordering of it. Um, so history currently is still going to be on top. Um, into the order, but then the remaining ones will be based on the import order you do in your profile. So um, that's why completion predictor is after AZ because I had just imported it. And so you can configure this order in your profile if you say import AZ above uh, completion predictor and so on. That currently chooses the ordering of, of predictions. Um, another cool thing uh, that I want to show off is the there we go, is uh, the adjustable view. So oh, let me just get my screen up. So um, one thing uh, you know, we heard is if you have your window too small, uh, list view won't render. It will just fail, fail silently. Um, and so we want to account for you know, different uh, terminal heights 
And uh, this is especially true for Cloud Shell, where the Cloud Shell height by default when you first open it up is too small for the 10 initial suggestions. And so um, now if, we, if I say I reduce my window height you know, to something smaller, I think this will work here, and I go back to list view, you'll see it now um, adjust to that size. So this previously wasn't incorporated and this is now um, makes using predictors and list view in Cloud Shell a lot easier and a lot more accessible for folks. So um, another thing that's a little harder to, um, to demo is we worked on deduplication of prediction results. So we were noticing that AZ predictor was actually so smart that it was starting to, uh, it could do more than just AZ commandlets. It can start doing some of the more common uh, commandlets that you might have, such as like experimental feature or you know, get path or your get child item or whatever. And so um, in the list view, it was starting to kind of uh, clutter your screen with, with duplicated suggestions. So history would have it because you would just run this very common commandlet. AZ predictor would have it as well. And so we didn't want that. And so we have incorporated deduplication that will now um, take out the duplicated result and have history kind of be your main fallback and such that uh, history will be the first one that kind of can help you assist and accelerate your, your interactive experience. Um, okay, I think. Oh, and of course we have done a bunch of uh, stability improvements to PS read line. We are really focused on increasing the stability of PS read line so you won't have any crashing during your uh, interactive experience with PowerShell. Um, and here's just another GIF of kind of the adjustable. Uh, and it's great too, the scrollable works as well in the adjustable so you don't get restricted by the number of predictions. It's, it's purely, um, everything will be available to you. Um, it will uh, just be adjustable. Okay, um, so another, you know, another quick shout out to kind of creating your own predictor. We created some amazing docs last year that include step-by-step step 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 instructions in how to create a predictor yourself. It shows uh, pretty straightforward instructions on how to create a simple hello world predictor. You can find it at aka.ms slash ps predictor doc. Um, or if you just search how to create a predictor, it's pretty, pretty uh, high up there in the, in the Google search returns and stuff. Um, so um, before I move on to the next thing, any questions currently about predictors? Yeah. We've got about a couple of questions. So first off, like, that scrollable thing that I was just going to look up. Yes. Page down. Page now down. Do yes, yeah, so we, uh, we do have page down. Um, we have, Dongbo, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's shift page down to get to the next predict, the first prediction of the next predictor and then page down will page you down 10 slots. Is that correct? Yeah, control, that's what. So let me see if I can show that off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works similar to Control R. Windows PowerShell, you do get the list view, yes, but it would just be history. Only history, Only history yes. So um, let's see. Oh, well, I actually, I don't have a page up and page down key. Silly me. <laughs> Trust me, it does work, yes. Currently it isn't, um, but that's good feedback. So we could add a configurability for that. Um, it's. It was very few and far between that we, we started noticing it, but um, something that we thought would be good to get ahead of before uh, we started getting just lots of the same uh, suggestions. Yeah, and so we need some duplication stuff. That's really just history files is what I want to know. Yes, so, so the question was around deduplication. Uh, I keep forgetting I have to repeat the questions for, for um, the recording, but basically imagine if, um, you know, in this example, uh, the, say I already have run get azvm dash status um, in my history, and it was in my history. So it would show up in history first and then just get removed from az predictor, but az predictor would then get the next prediction there um, that it would provide. Um, cool. So uh, let's move on to some other enhancements. 
how much time do I have? Oh, I got, I got, I got plenty of time. Um, so let's talk about something new. Let's talk about another thing that we're investing in for uh, enhancing your shell experience, something that we're calling feedback providers. Um, now, uh, this is, like I said, something brand new and something that we're still working in development, so, but we wanted to share it as it aligns with our goals for enhancing your shell experience, as well as we want to get early feedback you know, about this and how we can best improve it uh, to make sure it, it works for you guys. Because um, that's, that's really what we want to do. We want to make sure that everything works for your guys' flow and uh, helps with your work. So feedback providers are preventative um, measures for errors and stuff. But however, we know errors are always going to be inevitable. Um, it's kind of the next evolution of assistance in the shell where feedback providers are PowerShell modules that, the sub sub blah, that subscribe to the iFeedback provider interface, which is a new interface that gives the, uh, mess the error message uh, to the, the subscribers of that in order to then respond to as respond with a suggestion after a particular error code. Um, so in a nutshell, I, I know it's hard to see, I'll go to another slide, but say you don't have a command, in, uh, command installed, uh, this feedback provider would try to suggest to you what commands you do have installed in case you might have mistyped it or something. And I'll be demoing this too, so uh, don't, don't worry about that. But um, we want to make this an extensible model for folks that they can build feedback providers for, say, you know, they have a module that users typically run into a, an error, and um, they want to give a suggestion for, the, for that error. And so this, this triggers right now after an error is run and, and shows a, a nice UI to give you a suggestion on how you can best recover from your error. Um, we're very uh, passionate about the speed of recovering from errors in, in the console. Error, nobody likes errors. Errors suck, big red blob uh, of text. It's just, it's no fun. So um, we want to help uh, enhance that experience that way. And so currently we have one built-in one uh, that suggests kind of the install command, the example I was just giving earlier. You see that as a general suggestion. Um, but, and like I said, lots of development coming soon in the future. Uh, this is currently available in, P in the latest preview of PowerShell 7.4. It came out in 7.4 Preview 2 about a month ago, and uh, we're still working on improvements, and we hope to show, share, some, share some more improvements um, in the next previews uh, up to uh, GA. And so uh, let me just hop over here um, to PowerShell Preview here. Oh, if it'll load. Every time I stop the presentation, it just likes to freeze for a second there. Um, so uh, let's first do this, get experimental feature. Um, so we, number of experimental features, if you aren't familiar with experimental features, these are a number of features that we pose uh, in previews uh, to kind of get feedback, get early feedback before we implement them into the stable version of PowerShell. I'm not gonna be talking about all of them today, but I do wanna call out that the PS feedback provider is enabled here. You're gonna have to enable this um, in order to utilize this. Um, this is kind of a successor for the PS command not found suggestion, which does something similar. However, the UI was uh, not particularly, particularly appealing and it was not built for extensibility. And so extensibility is really what we wanted to add with this. Um, so now if I do also show this get PS subsystem, um, uh, there's a new PowerShell subsystem called feedback provider, similar to the command predictor. Uh, right now, the only implementation is the general one that I'll be showing in a second here, but wanted to call that out as a, a new new thing we're adding around that. So um, it's it's pretty simple. So let's say I, I fat finger something. Child I item. I forget the I. Oh, did I get child something like that? There we go. Um, so this is the feedback provider working in action. So you'll see uh, there's three aspects of it. The, the feedback provider source, the name of the source, um, right now this is a general one, general one focused at uh, you know, commands you have installed. Um, ideally we do want to expand this one to um, say you know, packages that are available in the PowerShell gallery or potentially Winget. Those are kind of the, the applications we're, we're looking for. Um, and then you'll kind of see a description of it and then the suggestion. And um, one thing that's not currently implemented, but uh, what we want to do is actually have this tied into uh, predictors where right now in my cursor, you'll see the correct spelling of get child item 
already there. So all you have to do then is just to pre press the right arrow key, accept it, and then go on with, with your day. So it's a very quick recovery path uh, for feedback providers um, uh, that way. And um, so one thing we'll show, I, I don't have a way to show this um, right now, but um, want to show off kind of what it looks like uh, when you have multiple feedback providers and other ways uh, this, this may look. And so um, this example here shows, you know, I'm trying to run up just a simple Python script, but I don't have Python installed. And so you'll see the general one trigger and say, hey, the most similar commands are Python, Python, Python 2, Python 3 that, you know, this machine has installed, um, but you may not have it installed. And so that's not really helpful. And so we created another feedback provider um, called the command not found uh, feedback provider. And this is very similar to the command not found, ba basically the exact same thing as the command not found experience you'll find in uh, many Ubuntu Linux systems, where if you don't have a package installed, it'll say, hey, you, you know, sudo apt install docker or sudo apt install, uh, you know, cube control or whatever. And so um, this basically is the uh, very, s that utilizes this, that kind of script and says, hey, if you are running PowerShell in Ubuntu, it will say, hey, you can, you know, install this with sudo apt install python3 or python. Um, and so uh, it will kind of order it similarly to predictors where it will be, you know, this one may, may trigger first, but it also may not trigger. This one only triggers on the command not found exception, but uh, other feedback providers can trigger on whatever error or exceptions that, that the feedback providers define. And so you can see like it, there's a lot of opportunity here for creating feedback providers for um, lots of common errors, as well as kind of legacy, one thing we're looking at is kind of legacy commands that folks might be familiar with, we can then suggest, hey, hey, you can also, it, this may not work here in this environment, but you can use this and it'll give you the exact same thing. Um, and so this kind of helps with the onboarding to, to PowerShell, so to speak, and, and maybe the particular system that you are on. Um, and yeah, so, um, Let's see. Any questions on feedback provi providers at this at this time? I have a question. In the example of the demo, did y'all lie when there were two misspellings in it? Is that why it didn't trigger feedback provider? Is there a distance that it has to threshold? Yeah. So I, we're currently improving the the fuzzy matching of it. Um, I believe it just uses fuzzy matching uh, at this time, but we want to you know, improve it a, a, a little bit more. Um, yeah. The question was around why it didn't trigger when it had two misspellings versus one, and uh, that might have just been a fluke. We, we have a little more improving and tweaking to go with the, the fuzzy matching uh, that it currently uses, so. Um, okay, and then, let's see. So enhancements in the shell don't end there. Um, you know, there's lots of uh, really cool things you can do with PS read line. Um, we talked about this in the state of the shell, PS read line key handlers. So key handlers are a great way to enhance your experience. You can now bind functions to uh, a particular, you know, core, so you can quickly um, just, you know, do do some um, operations without having to type everything out. You can just hit control and some kind of key. You can assign all this stuff. I'll go into the console and kind of demo some of this stuff too. Um, there's a number of PS3 line options you can use. Of course, PS style is great for changing colors to to best fit your needs and, and your preference. Um, there's also, you know, PS default parameter values, so you can have this default give parameter values uh, for some commands, for some defaulted commands. Um, we also have this really cool sample profile in the PS Reline module uh, that you install that you can check out here. So let me um, show you a little bit about that. Um, so you can see all the different PS Reline key handlers. Uh, if you do just get PS uh, Reline key handlers, there's a bunch of binded ones, bound ones, and unbound ones, so uh, you can find those if you do bound. These ones are bound by default, and then you can also do unbound, um, which is a number of other uh, unbound uh, operations, such as you know repeat search, say uh, search forward, next suggestion. These ones are for prediction. So if you want to uh, tab through, say suggestions in inline, you can do so if you if you bind this key. Um, there's a number of other completion functions that you can use uh, for ed the editing experience. There's too many to go through today, but I suggest you guys check that out. We also have a great um, doc page uh, that we published recently 
on uh, using PS read line key handlers. Um, and uh, we, we talked about this earlier, but we also you know, found a way to uh, work around the alt key being missing on, on Mac. So now you can have it in parity with your Windows machine, uh, which is pretty awesome. So definitely go check that out. Um, and then what was the other thing I was gonna show off? Hang on, I gotta go back to my slides real quick. Uh, oh, the sample profile. So um, this is pretty cool. So in uh, just the, the, the module, uh, you can't see that, but in the folder where the module installs, there's a sample PS read line profile uh, that has a number of really cool examples that you can use to, um, to uh, for binding and unbinding a bunch of different keys. Uh, they, there's some descriptive uh, examples about this um, that are, pr are pretty helpful. And uh, you know, one I like that I have already in my profile that I like to use a lot is uh, the smart uh, brackets. So if I type an open bracket, it will automatically type the closing bracket. And then if I try to close it, it will just, oh, on key, it will just go to the next cursor. So it won't write it twice. I personally like that. You can build all sorts of really cool ones. Also completers uh, that you can do so. If you want a shorthand, say git commit with G, just git cmt, it will do that there. There's an example in that sample profile as well. Um, so there's lots of enhancements in the shell that you can do. Um, it's just kind of you know discovering what fits for you and uh, what best works with your your workflow. Um, and I think that is kind of it. I'm towards the end. I wanted to leave a bunch of time for questions. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, about anything we've talked about here. Yes. Yeah, here it is. History save path. So you can find it right here. Um. Oh. <laughs> One thing I want to note for that too is that one of your other PSP line options is there's you can have providers for like scrubbing your commands. So like you put a plain text key or something in there, you can have something in there that won't save the history if you use like dash API. Yeah, so, so there is already like uh, kind of scrubbing enabled so that if it sees something like password or login, um, I forget, all, like token I think is another one. Um, we have the, the, the kind of uh, list documented on our docs. Uh, that won't be saved. Um, so yes, we are aware that that, that <laughs> could lead to issues. So um, good call. Thank you, Justin. Well, so that, that's a, definitely a, a big request for you know, uh, having a chat GPT or an open AI predictor. Right. Um, the problem is uh, we have a pretty strict timeout for predictors that, that in order to reduce the disruption to your uh, experience. We have a 20 millisecond timeout. So predictors have to return a result within 20 milliseconds uh, before, we, before we render um, or just you know, ignore it. And so if we go over that, it's going to lag your, your uh, interactive experience. And so you can't do that currently. Um, uh, if you're trying to call off box to a, uh, a large language model like you know, ChatGPT or something like that. Um, it's still something we're exploring. We have a few ideas around that, but um, nothing, nothing concrete. Okay. Cool. Well, if that is it. Um, just wanted to uh, say thank you, and we love hearing from you. Uh, my Twitter and the PowerShell team's Twitter, you can reach out to us on GitHub. We love getting feedback on GitHub uh, on our PS Readline repo. So any issues or questions you have there, um, we, we triage weekly and always keep an eye on it throughout the week. So um, yeah, uh, thank you very much for coming. And, uh,